Hi guys, welcome back. It's Lionel, your tech lead and partner at Westfall. And a couple of days ago, I put up a post on YouTube asking you guys to submit your coding problems or coding issues in PHP. And that post got about 20 comments, lots of likes. Uh, didn't get anything yet, so please send me something to take a look at. But today, what we're doing is I have decided to launch a new series called Coding Best Practices in PHP or something like Code Like a Pro. The difference is this time we'll be covering the mistakes rather than what are the best practices. And it occurred to me through a lot of comments, to a lot of so-called PHP haters as well, that people regard PHP as poor quality or you know poor development. But my opinion is like this. Basically, PHP is a very powerful language. It's sort of like a Swiss army life. It has lots and lots of features, lots of different options you can do stuff. Compare that to generally the other kind of languages, which is kind of one tool for one solution. So a hammer to put a nail in, you know, a screwdriver to take it out. PHP, on the other hand, has lots of different tools and you can attack a certain issue in multiple different ways. Now, does that mean that every tool is the best way? Probably not. And that's where we are here today to actually address some of that flexibility and using the correct best practices or where you know PHP will make a mistake, you can actually improve your code, address the issues and come up with very much more reliable. So today we're gonna to talk about one of the mistakes that I see very commonly, which is creating unnecessary objects and folders. Now, and you've got your socks, you've got your shirts, you've got your pants, and then you've got stuff that kind of like doesn't fit anywhere. So you just throw it into this so-called the widget box. That's similarly how widgets work. <clears throat> now, this is a poor, pretty poor practice because first of all, you're not really sure where these things go. Most of the time you never use them. So for example, if you had a bow tie or you had some sort of hat fascinator, you know, ladies have that, you just throw that in there. The fact that you already have that in the first place, it means you have something kind of unnecessary. The second thing is that it's very hard to work with these things because people don't understand, like uh, a lot of people struggle to get around the idea of what the object is, you know, these abstract theory things. So it's better to have them part of the MVC in the current structure. And I'll go through a little bit of code that I found that I would like you guys to see how the use of widget is and how it fell outside the MVC structure and then how we can correct that and what are some of the mistakes that you're going to encounter. So okay, so here I have a web page uh, in the E2 framework, right? And uh, in this page, it's under the index called Pro Provider Index. Provider is a noun, so don't worry too much about it. It's used correctly here. But what is interesting is we have this uh, render page uh, that pops out here. And then we have a bootstrap tab page and it's full of items in there. So what has happened is that somebody has created this thing called a provider list, which is generated from a provider widget. And at this point of time, you're wondering what is a provider widget? And this is the issue that I want to talk about, which is this all encapsulating powerful thing called the widget. And here we have the provider widget which looks like basically a um, some HTML. And then it has a, uh, like the overall list on top that, um, so it's a nest of a nest, okay? So you can see where we're getting with this. This is pretty complicated and it's starting to be very unclear what is the word of widget. So I'm noticing a few couple issues down here. One of them is this idea of rendering uh, inside code here in the view. This should be happening either in the controller, uh, probably the controller is the best. And then the other one is just creating a widget. As you see, it falls outside in the widget folder where else it belongs to this provider thing, which is part of the provider MVC over here, right? So it's kind of like, again, I talked about this, uh, having a bow tie that fits nowhere in your closet. So what can we do about this? First of all, you, let's analyze the amount of code that's actually inside provider widget, right? What exactly does provider widget do? And you can see here, it runs a search, it runs a, uh, some data, and then it displays the data. So actually it's more or less functioning like a view. 
So we can actually get rid of these things, right? And actually put let the controller do the work and then start, um, you know, just get rid of the whole widget structure. So let's see what we can do and um, what we can uh, do. So as you can see, I'm moving some code over here. One of the things was, it used to be called items uh, and I've copied it out from the uh, widget here. <coughs> uh, sorry, I think here and here from the view and I've actually put it in here. You don't want, as much as possible, you want to try to avoid putting too many arrays inside the view. View should be nice and clean. So the other thing is I've called it tab items because you want to, like as people are looking at it, what is an item, item of what? So we are going to write it as tab items. So we're just cleaning up some of this code. And then here we have feature provided view. So we've got a render of that. Uh, looking at this, I think we can just get rid of this whole section here. Okay, and then put that over here. You know, you can just get rid of one line of code, why not, right? And then uh, here, same thing, we can do the same thing with that. And sort of just dump that over here. And if you find that's too long, we can kind of like just uh, shorten it to uh, just call it the um, provider view. And a little bit. So provider list view. And then we have a data provider that's coming from here to here. Okay. Now, obviously, if you have all this stuff, you want to be provider DP would be better. Because the data provider like doesn't say anything. So you say, okay, here we have one real being pulled here and going here, and then we have tab items. So when you go into the view, right, all you see is this uh, one thing over here. We can get rid of some of this, which is an equal. And there you see the using the tab interface here. So the code just becomes so much cleaner over here. We can even uh, indent it a little bit <clears throat> so that it kind of sticks out nicely. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get rid, I've got rid of the entire provider widget here that was just doing nothing. It's just doing nothing over here. And I'm going to move some of these things over to the other side so that it's a lot easier to look at the code, but we didn't need this entire provider widget anymore. Okay. Here that. Okay. So as I said, we've gone through the list and I've spent about 20 minutes off camera going around drinking coffee and, um, a couple of things I've done over here. I fixed the CSS because it was pretty confusing. Second of all, I'm now getting rid of a lot of the op, uh, of the widgets, which was unnecessary. And this is the part of this video, right? That we are these provider widget and provider widget list. Why? Number one, they're not really widgets. There's no self-contained code inside these widgets. They are actually just views. Okay. They are, it could belong to many, many different, that's where widgets are better. So I said, this is one of the big errors that uh, people make in software development, putting like this causes so many problems. First of all, I'm so confused with the different namings all across the system. Uh, number two, it's so hard to work between the widget and the view. As I said, you want to keep it between these three different elements, a controller, a model and a view. These are the three things. And again, recap, final summary of what we did. Don't use widgets unnecessary. Don't use objects or components or what we call these abstract ideas. Let's see what we did. We used to have a bunch of stuff in widgets view. They are now gone. They're not being used anymore. In fact, uh, I replaced them. So I renamed this from feature, uh, what we call provider featured or feature provider into featured. I've called a list with underscore there, denoting that we're actually using this as a partial. We've also done one for list item. So when you come over here, right, and you come over here, this is the only code you see, which is the tabs widget. And then here we have tabs item. Where did we get this from? I've already identified that I loaded it into the template in the controller. So you can see one thing here, again, I'm not mixing any, uh, Code, too much code into the view. There's only one or two lines. Most of the hard work is being handled by the controller and this is the exact way that you want it done. 
So here, the controller's got loaded up models and paint models, and we've loaded up provider search and with provider DP. We've created a uh, array and let render partial handle all the work. Like previously, I put partial. It doesn't work when it's in an array and then not in the view. So here we've done that. And all we're doing is loading one variable into the view. So this makes it so clean. So if I'm working, if I'm looking at the view side, I only see a little bit of code. When I'm looking at a controller, I don't see anything too much to do with um, the, the view part. You know, and there's not much HTML there. I mean, one or two icons there. That's about it. That's all you want to, you know, all you're too bothered about. And then once we go inside the code, right? We've got this, we know that's a tab item. Again, I don't quite like too much. Uh, this is, it itself is a widget or display widget. Uh, it's okay if it's a third party, especially if it comes from the stack, the, the approved stack, but that's fine. And then we have the items loaded up and we want to find out the items. We have the this uh, helper here. I've cleaned up a little bit of the code here in terms of this loading part. We'll talk about variables and actually putting stuff into models on the next time we discuss this. Arranging and keeping things in the correct order. It's kind of like your know, laundry, right? If you're going to rush to put on a formal attire, they should all be in one place. Uh, the MVC says, okay, we're going to put all the shirts in one place, all the pants in one place, but there'll be a section for formal sports, uh, hot weather, cold weather. That's how it is. Okay, guys. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's a little bit more technical than I'm usually used to, but this is quite an important topic. And I hope you join me on the next time on for bad PHP coding 101. Okay, thank you. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.